Welcome to my channel. I want, I want to talk about a viral video that, that is on Twitter that I just found out about this morning. But before I do that, I have to thank each and every one of you that's coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting. Thank you for subscribing. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. I'm absolutely blown away by the community that's being built and by the, the hearts of the people that are involved. Here we are on the internet where snarkiness and meanness and cruelty is the norm. And on my channel, we see very little of that. So I had to thank you because it's you that's building that, not me. So thank you very much. This video popped up in my uh, email today. <clears throat> it apparently has gone viral. And what I want to do is I want to listen to it. And then I want to talk about it. Why is it that... Okay. Not hearing it. Oh. There we go. Before I start this, I should say something. Uh, I decided a while ago to just do these videos as I do them and not worry about the mistakes I make. Because you need to understand that I'm human just like you and I make mistakes. So that's the reason why you see me do some stuff that you wonder, why doesn't he edit that out? Why should I? Let's go ahead and watch this. Why is it that I have to work 40 hours a week just so I can have a place to live? 40 hours a week makes me $2,000 a month and my rent is 1660. So I work 40 hours a week so I can have a two bedroom apartment and an extra $300 a month. Like, it doesn't cover my phone, internet, food, you know? So not only do I not have any extra money, but just working makes me so exhausted that I don't have time either. Like I get off work at 5.30, come home, I'm just so tired. I'm so tired that like, Anything that I need to do outside of work, I then just push off to like the weekend. And I'm like, I'm just too tired to do this after work. I'll wait until Saturday. So then I end up with so much to do on the weekend that ends up having to be split into two days. So I have to do stuff on both Saturday and Sunday. So then I don't get a day off. I don't get a day to relax. I don't get to decompress. So it is really like working seven days a week constantly and I, I don't want to do that anymore right like I don't care how poor and miserable I would have to be but I literally can't have a place to live without this you know like I don't know what to do I'm not I'm not made for this I don't have the money time or energy to enjoy my life outside of work and I don't know what to do about it anymore you know I'm so tired why so that's the video It, it triggered a number of thoughts in my mind, and I want to talk about those because I think it's important. Um, first of all, life is about decisions. 
And you have to make decisions in life based on where you live and what your circumstances are and what, what your, what your capabilities are and, um, what your inputs are. If you're making 2000 a month, you shouldn't be paying 1660 for an apartment. That's too much. I know you probably, you know, you want to, you want to have a nice place, but maybe for now, you shouldn't have a nice place. Maybe you should have an inexpensive place to stay. But <clears throat> there's a uh, there's a number of bigger issues here that I want to touch upon. First of all, when you're young, you think of life as being this broad expanse that's out in front of you. And you have all the time in the world to do what you want to do. As you get older, you realize that wasn't really the case. And I should have done a better job of maximizing my time. I tell people this all the time. You should do something that you love, even if it doesn't pay you anything. Because... When you do something that you love, it will end up paying you everything. So you have to figure out what it is that you love. The very first video I made on this channel was about doing that. And I'm not going to repeat all that. If you want to watch it, I'll put a link in the comments in the description and you can watch that separately. But you have to... Life is about making decisions and you have to sit down and you have to ask yourself, what is it that I really want out of life? And I know that can be really hard to do when you're working 40 hours. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, you're working 40 hours a week and you, you uh, just feel like you don't have any time. But you need to set aside the time to plan your life, to think it through and ask yourself, what do I really want to do with my life? What are the things that I love? And what are the things that I don't love? And in both in work and in life, you should try to maximize the things that you love. Because when you love something, it's no longer work. The last 20 years of my life were spent working in computer security. And I loved it so much that I really didn't think about it as work. I, I just enjoyed it to no end. And I worked a lot of hours sometimes. I worked from early in the morning until very late at night. But it wasn't tiring because I was having fun. And I got paid well, I admit that. But I got paid well because I was doing something I loved and therefore I did my best. See, when you're just working to work, when you're just going to a job to get a paycheck, you're just going through the motions, you're not going to excel and you're not going to get more money because you're not, you're not doing it for the right reasons. When you're doing something that you love, you're going to do it to the best of your ability. You're going to enjoy every minute of it. And you're going to get paid for doing it and paid well. Maybe not initially, but eventually you'll get paid well. You have to think about life, and even when you're young, as a long-term plan. What are my goals? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to do with my life? What do I want to be as I get older? And that's sometimes not easy to do. It can take a while for you to figure it out because you don't have a lot of life experience and so you don't really know what's good, what's bad, what's best for you, what's not best for you. So it may take you months or even years to figure out what it is that you really love doing. But that should be in the back of your head all the time. It should be something that's on your mind constantly. Where am I headed? 
What do I want to accomplish? What do I do that I really enjoy? And I've always recommended to people, get a piece of paper, get an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, draw a line down the center, and then a line across the top. On the left-hand side, put your pros. On the right-hand side, put your cons, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. You want a column of pros and a column of cons. And then write down on the pros everything that you love. And I do mean everything. If you love sitting on your butt at home, put that down. If you love skiboarding, snowboarding, put that down. If you love hiking, put that down. If you love watching movies, put that down. Believe me, people make money selling manure. You can make money doing anything. The point is, make the money doing something that you love because when you love it, it's not work anymore. And you don't come home exhausted anymore. So write all your pros down. Write down everything. I always loved school. I hated school. Uh, I like being around people. I can't stand being around people. I like hot climates. I like cold climates. I like being outside. I like being indoors. I like sitting in a chair. I like standing up. Whatever it is, write it down. And then when you made your list of pros and cons, sit there and think about it. What can I do in life that will maximize the number of pros that I have and minimize the number of cons? So you can't ever get rid of them all. You can't have everything you want and you can't get rid of everything you don't want. But you can maximize the things that you do want and minimize the things you don't want and end up doing something that perhaps you never even thought of before that you will love to do, that you will enjoy like crazy, and that you'll make a lot of money at. And by a lot of money, I'm not talking about millions of dollars. I'm talking about enough to pay your bills and not have to worry. You know, if, if you want to be a millionaire, then you need to focus on making money. That's it's that simple. Now, some people can do it doing things they love, but most of the people that I've seen that have been millionaires, that have been rich people, they're doing it strictly for the money. That's their goal, and that's what they're trying to do. And I guess they love money, and that, that gives them joy. And so they're enjoying what they do, and that's why they do it well. But for most of us, that's not what the primary motivator is. It's not money. It's something else. And you need to figure out what your primary motivator is. What is it that really turns you on? Is it art? Is it music? Is it sport? Is it talking? Is it being quiet? Whatever it is, you can make money at it. Seriously, you can make money at it. Good money. I mean, I've been retired since 2015, and I don't have to worry about a thing. I'm not rich, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't have to worry about paying bills. I don't have to worry about the cost of living going up. I don't have to worry about taking care of my family. That's been taken care of because I did things that I loved when I was working, and so I made good money at it. And I made good decisions, too. I mean, that's part of it. Obviously, living in a two-bedroom apartment by yourself when you're only making 2000 a month is probably not the best decision. You need to move into a smaller apartment or get a roommate or two roommates or three roommates. Share the expense and share the labor. And you'll find that you have more free time. And you'll find that you'll enjoy life more. But don't, don't sit there like some people do their entire lives in a job that they hate. They just absolutely despise it, and yet they go there every day in total drudgery just to pay the bills. Why would you do that? Life is not that long. I mean, I plan on living to be 117, but let's face it, 117 is a blip in the radar screen. It's a tiny amount of time. So use it wisely. Spend your time doing things that you love and you will be wealthy beyond your dreams, not necessarily financially, but definitely in terms of life. So if this was my daughter, 
the advice that I would give her is get a smaller apartment or get a roommate so that you're not spending so much on your housing. Your housing should only be 25% of your expense. So if you're making 2000 a month, you should be in a $500 a month apartment, not a 1660. That's way too much. Okay. Secondly, sit down and make a list of pros and cons and figure out what it is that you really enjoy doing so that you can end up heading in that direction. If you don't have a plan, you'll never get there. If you don't know where you're going, you'll never get there. So you, you have to have an idea of what it is you want in life. You have to have an idea of what it is that you enjoy before you can find the jobs or the, the businesses or the whatever it is, the profession that will get you to the place where you love getting up in the morning and you love going to work and you, you, you don't even look at the clock when, when it turns five o'clock, you're not ready to leave the, the job, you're, you're still working and you're not even thinking about leaving because you're enjoying it so much. It really is possible, trust me. I know because I did it. So, you know, I, I, I feel bad for this girl in a way, but in a way I think I wish someone had sat her down and taught her about life because obviously no one has. She doesn't know any better. And so she's stuck in a rut. She's trapped and she feels like there's no way out. And I can understand that. But it doesn't have to be that way. Life doesn't have to be that way. You can do better. And for everyone that watches my videos, I pray that you will be abundant, that you will, you will be blessed beyond measure, and that you'll live a long life and that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I also pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your request known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.